everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Kayla and as I'm sure you are all aware, we are going to go through exterior stairs and ramps today. We are going to start with just a planned presentation. So I'm gonna go through some material that will probably take us about 25 minutes. After that, we will open it up for any live questions that you have. And if you have questions during the presentation or really at any point today, feel free to chat those in. I do have some of my coworkers here with me and they're here to answer any questions that you have. And also if I don't have an answer to your questions, they're gonna go ahead and chime in there. We are also recording this presentation. So we're gonna post that up. You'll get a link to that tomorrow. You'll be able to rewatch it. So if there's anything that you wanna see again, you're gonna have a chance to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into the presentation now. And then, like I said, we'll open up for questions after that. Today, we're going to work with stair and ramp options for exteriors. We'll begin by looking at the defaults, then we'll place multiple different stair configurations and edit them. And finally, we'll work with the ramp tools. So I'll begin today by opening up a plan for us to place stairs. I'm going to start by taking a look at our stair defaults. So we can find that by going under the edit menu to our default settings, or you can always find the default settings for an object by selecting the tool and then double clicking on the tool. So that's going to open up our default settings. As you can see here, we have three different defaults for stairs and ramps. We have a separate default for interior versus exterior stairs. So when we place stairs outside, we can have a different set of defaults, a different look to the stairs versus when we do so inside. So I'm gonna double click on the exterior stairs just to open up these defaults. This first general panel, we're not gonna worry about too much with the defaults. The main thing that we wanna pay attention to is the width. Putting a value in here will go ahead and guide us on that. Um, but I'll also show you some other ways that we're gonna be adjusting that width or placing it automatically at a separate width. Under style, um, if we want to not have a tread for our exterior stairs, typically that is not something we might need. Um, at the very least, I'm going to get rid of the overhang for the tread for our exterior stairs. And then whether or not we have open risers, so there's going to be our open risers, we would need to establish a stringer as well as we're, if we're doing open risers, which we'll do later. And then whether or not it's open underneath, so whether or not it looks like it has um, a wall or something to that effect under the stairs. So then stringers, when we have the closed stairs, I'm not going to worry about a stringer, but we will place a stringer later. Um, and then when we do place a staircase against a wall, it will automatically add a trim, basically molding up against the stairs. For exterior, I don't want that, so we're going to go ahead and deselect this option. And then we're gonna take a look at our railing options. So there are a few different panels here that are gonna define our railing. First of all, whether or not we have a railing turned on for our left and our right side of our stairs. And then what style of railing are we using? So if I zoom in here, are we specifying the style of the individual balusters? Do we have an open railing? In which case we definitely would need to specify a newel. I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Are we gonna have an open with a middle rail? There also is a checkbox down here to add in a bottom rail, which we can also have with the balusters. Or are we going to have panels? So if we do have balusters down in the Newell's balusters panel, here's where we can specify the balusters and check to add in a Newell post, um, which would continue along if we have a longer staircase. Every 96 inches, we would have one of those posts. Um, and if we do have a Newell, do we have the rail passing over top of that post? Or do we have the post, the newel independent from the railing? So in which case I can specify the height here, something more like 44, 42 inches, which is going to then go up over the top of the railing. Or again, I can have the rail pass over the newel. I'm actually not going to have a newel post for this particular set of stairs. And in the railing, Again, if we were to do panels down in the Newell's balusters, now you notice we're not specifying the individual baluster style. We could instead specify a panel style. So the library is going to have a different set of panels that we can work with. Um, things like cable wire, 
Um, if we're going to do a glass panel, um, those are all going to be things that would be in the, the panel specification as opposed to the baluster. I'm going to go back to our, our simple baluster, and I'm not going to have a bottom rail, so our baluster is going to come down and hit the stairs individually. And then the final one that's going to specify the railing is this rails panel. So this is where we can specify the top rail. That's what we have for our railing right here. We can change out the dimensions. So I'm going to change the height, reduce that down to just one and a half inches, but increase the width to three inches. And then if we did have a middle rail, so again, back in the railing, if we had specified open with a middle rail, then that's where we could have a middle rail specified here and that checkbox for the bottom rail, here's where we can establish what that's going to look like. So three separate rail profiles. All of the profiles here, if I replace the profile, that's going to be a molding. So if there's a different molding profile that you would rather use for the railing, um, we do have some in the library that you can specify. But I'm just going to do a simple rectangle for right now. And then the last panel I'm going to pay attention to is the materials. So most of these I'm going to leave the same. Um, what we have for the tread currently is just a color. So I'm going to go ahead and select a material. It's one that I'm actually already using in my plan materials. I'm going to find the Trex material, uh, which is called Pewter. So I'm going to scroll down here until I find that. So our plan materials is going to have all of the materials that are already contained within the plan. I'm already using this for the porch. So we'll go ahead and use that again. And I'm also going to change the railing themselves, so everything that's using this birch blonde. And again, I'll find in my plan materials, I have just a color bone material that we will use. And then once I have the staircase, the default set the way that I want, I'm gonna select okay. And now we're ready to place any stairs. Um, I'm not going to pay attention to our ramp defaults yet. We'll go ahead and change the ramp as we draw it. So I'll select Done, and I'm going to start by placing one staircase here in the front. So I'm just going to zoom in here where we're going to place it. Now here I already have an opening specified. So when I click to place my stairs here, it's going to fill the gap, first of all, from where my terrain is up to the platform. So it's going to find the difference in the platform and place the number of stairs that are needed to reach the porch. And then it's also going to fill the opening that I already had specified here. So it's not gonna follow the width that I had set in my defaults. Instead, it's going to simply fill that opening. So if I had a much wider opening, I would have a much wider staircase that had been placed here. And then I can open up my stairs individually and specify things like ensuring that it has a railing on one side or both, um, if it was up against a wall, whether or not it had a railing up at the wall. If I would like this particular staircase to have a different set of Newell's balusters, a different set of railing, um, then I would go ahead and specify that here. But all I'm going to do is just turn that railing on, select OK, and there we have that staircase placed. Now I'm going to place another one over against the edge here next to the garage. So again, I'm just going to click and it's going to find the number of stairs needed in order to reach that platform. So then I'm just going to bump this up against the wall. This is only one, one stair, so it may not need a railing, but it will place a railing for us here against the wall. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and delete this extra opening. Since I didn't already have an opening placed when I placed this, these stairs, it automatically placed that opening. And if I extend the width of these stairs, it will also automatically extend the opening for us. So now I'm going to place a set of stairs over here in the back corner of this porch. I'll zoom around so we can take a look at what we're editing. And back here we're going to do some mitered stairs. So we're going to wrap around the edge here. So again, I'm just going to click to place my stairs on both sides. Clicking to place stairs when it's a terrain situation is the easiest way to do it because it's going to find the number of risers that we need. Um, we'll place another staircase here in just a minute where 
we'll make some adjustments to that, but for right now, the click stairs is just the easiest way for us to go about this. So with our mitered stairs, what we can do is as soon as we have two staircases perpendicular to each other that we get at a 90 degree angle, it will automatically wrap those stairs around. So as soon as their corners meet up, it's going to wrap around our stairs automatically for us. And now it's placing a post here, and I would like to get rid of that post. So the easiest way for us to go about that is just to make the, these walls invisible. So rather than having an opening here, we'll just make the entire wall section invisible. So I'm going to take this railing wall and I'm going to break the wall in two because I don't need the entire wall to be invisible, just the portion that it meets up with our stairs. So I'll tab through until I grab that wall. And then down in the edit toolbar, there's an option to make it invisible. And I'm gonna to need to do the same thing over here. Um, but instead of breaking the wall, what I'm gonna do is select this invisible wall. There is a diamond hanging off of this wall that allows me to draw the same wall type. So I can take my invisible wall and just extend it along so that now I have two invisible walls meeting up and that post is no longer there. And now I'm going to assume that this is a situation where I want a specialized railing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out the railing manually. So here in my toolbar, I have my railing and deck tools. They are going to have a different set of defaults, but I'm not worried about that right now. I'm just going to click and drag. So maybe I want a railing that's going to be somewhere in the middle of this rail section. So I'll draw that railing and initially it's going to be just a straight railing. But I'm going to open up this railing and under structure, nope, under rail style, we have the option to follow stairs. So that's going to have um, make the railing follow the slope of the stairs automatically. And I'll do the same thing over here. Again, I'm just going to draw out a railing in the center of this staircase and then tab through till I find that railing, open it up, and under rail style, I'll find that option to follow stairs. Also, there is an option to follow terrain. So if you needed um, a railing to follow the slope of a terrain, that's where you can go ahead and select that option. Um, basically, fences are railings that are following the terrain. So there we have our railings. Um, that can be a nice way to do some custom configurations for the railings. These have basically the same options if we were going to edit the individual components of these railings um, as when you edit it from the stairs, but it does give us more control over where those railings are going to sit. All right, so now I'm going to zoom around to the back here where we have another deck, and we're going to do a staircase coming off of this deck. So over in this section here. So we're going to do an L-shaped stair, but I'm going to use my click stairs initially just to know how many risers that I need. So I'll go ahead and click to place those stairs. So it's gonna tell me here if I open this up that I need 10 total risers in order to meet the terrain and get up to the porch. And I can actually just use this initial segment or I can draw my own. So I'm gonna use this one, we're just gonna reduce its number. So I'll reduce it down to four here. And you'll see that staircase, it's no longer meeting the terrain, so we're gonna need to draw another segment. So I'm gonna draw one perpendicular. Now if I left click and draw, we're gonna be drawing up. So you can see the up arrow indicated here, and if, we, if I release my mouse to draw that, you can see it drew that staircase up. These two are not going to meet because they're going in opposite directions. So instead, I am going to right click to draw out my stairs, and that will allow me to draw in the down direction. So I'll draw out four, and then the landing will be my fifth additional riser. So I'll click in between these two, and that will automatically place my landing for me. And then just to double check, I'll open this up, 
and I can see it says staircase reaches next level. It's not giving me information that it's steep or shallow, which means it's a good fit. I need 10 risers. I have 10 risers. And now I'll make a couple of edits to these stairs. So under style, I am going to have open risers and open underneath. So we can see our open risers. Obviously, we're going to need to add some stringers here. So I'm going to do two closed stringers, which are going to be on each end. We also have the option to do three standard stringers. I'm going to do our closed stringers here so we have a little bit of a trim look. And with those closed stringers, we can decide how high above and below the tread do we want the closed stringers to be. So if I wanted to reduce the width of this stringer, this is where I could do that. And then I'm going to go back to my style um, because right now my tread thickness is just one inch. I might need a little bit thicker here. Um, let's do at least an inch and a half. For, so that's going to establish for those treads how thick is that going to be. And then those are the only things that I'm concerned with changing with the stairs right now. So I'll just select OK to apply my changes. And there's my new staircase. So finally, we'll go ahead and move back over towards the front. And we're going to do a ramp coming off of the side here, um, out towards the front. So the ramp tools are going to work very similar to our stair tools, whether we're clicking and dra dragging to draw or whether we're going to click just to place and have it automatically find the difference in platform. So I'm going to start again, just like we did with our last staircase. I'm going to start by clicking just to establish how long this ramp needs to be. When I just click to place a ramp like that, it is going to try to stay as close to a 1 in 12 slope as it can. So if I open this up, we're at a little bit shallower than a 1 in 12 slope, a 1 in 12 and 1 eighth. So that is, if we take a look at this, if I just select this back line here, I can see what the distance of that ramp is. So we have a 23 foot long ramp, which means we have about a 23 inch difference between my terrain and my porch platform, um, because we have about one foot, one inch per foot is our slope. Similar to our stairs and our ramps, um, if we extend out stairs, what it's going to do is it's just going to become more shallow the further along it goes. So if we look at that staircase as I extended it, it just increased the number of risers and each of those risers is much shallower. Um, so we have a, a reduced riser step. I'm going to control Z to undo that. So similarly, if I take this ramp and I just continue to extend that out, and then I open up this ramp, we're going to have a reduced slope the further out that that goes. So here we have a 1 in 23 slope. So 1 in 12 is going to be our minimum. Um, and then as we extend out from there, we're going to wind up with a much shallower pitch. However, if I reduce past that, so if I go way down to here, you can see it's not making it steeper than 1 in 12. So our ramp tool is automatically going to not go any steeper than 1 in 12. Now, I can override that. So I can open up this ramp, and I can deselect automatic heights and change what that slope is going to be or automatically put what my top and bottom for the ramp are going to be. But I'm going to leave automatic heights selected because I do not want to go any steeper than 1 in 12. For our ADA standards, that's going to be our minimum slope. But I am going to use that value of 23 feet. So here I have 5 foot 9. I'm going to reduce this down to about 2 and a half feet, maybe just slightly smaller than that. And then just like I did for my other staircase, I'm going to draw again using my right mouse button so that I'm drawing going down to just click and drag another ramp here. And then I'll move this around into place. And now for my landing, I'm going to want to have at least a five foot by five foot radius. That's gonna be my minimum turn radius for a wheelchair. So I'm gonna just move these apart just a little bit further to try to get closer to that five foot by five foot. 
So then I will click in between these two ramps, and even though they're a fair distance apart, it should still find that landing and place that for us. And I'm going to change the shape of this a little bit, so I'm going to use my edit handles to just reshape it. And make sure that I have at least five feet. And it looks like I have a little bit over five feet, which is great because I also have a railing. So we're gonna to need to accommodate for that as well. In fact, I might even increase the size of this up to maybe five feet, three inches, just to make sure we have enough room. And I could even, cause this landing is just a polyline. So I can do anything that I can do with a typical polyline, including curve my edges. So that's one thing that could also make it a little bit more easy for us to turn around in here. So if I select an edge down in the edit toolbar, there's an option to change the straight line to an arc. So whatever edge I have selected is going to curve. And I can do that on both of my outside edges here. So if we look at our landing, we have some curved edges. And then once we have a curve, there are some different options to be able to edit the curve. So I can increase the radius of that curve or decrease it as need be um, if I want a really deep arc there, arc radius. And for each of these ramps, I have a distance of three feet, three inches. So that's going to meet our minimum. We need at least three feet wide. Um, if we want to extend that out, we can. Um, we can also use the temporary dimensions to select an edge and select a dimension or we can open up a ramp and type in the width right here. So if we wanted more like 42 inches, we can type that in. And as for our materials, I can open up the ramp and change the materials here, but all of the materials that I want to use are currently being used in the plan. So I'm going to use my material eyedropper which will allow me to select a material in the plan and paste it onto my ramp. So I'm going to need to do that for all my components. And then I'm going to use my material eyedropper again to grab this white color from the porch. And we did component before, so I just pasted that material onto a single component of this ramp. I'm going to switch over to plan mode because I do not have a single instance where I want to be using this birch material instead, or oak rather. So I'm just going to paste and all of the materials in my plan that would be using that oak will now switch over. And I'm going to leave the birch blonde material as it is. So we'll go ahead and um, leave that a slightly different color than the rest of the house just so that it stands out a little bit more. And if I wanted to edit that railing further, I could open up and we have the exact same options. So if I only want the railing on one side, wouldn't be typical for a ramp, but if I only wanted the railing on one side, I could remove from one side or the other, change the height. We want that height to remain between 34 and 38 inches. Um, so I could raise that up or lower it just a little bit to still stay within our ADA requirements. Um, and then the style of the railing, we can do open with middle rail. This is going to be a little bit more typical if we're doing like a commercial style building um, or an open rail or add in panels. Um, I could do like a glass panel or a cable rail. So I'm going to stick with balusters so that it matches the style of the rest of our house. So it makes that ramp a little bit cohesive. It's not sticking out too much. And I've been mentioning those ADA requirements a few times. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at my library browser here. I do actually have it up over on my other screen. So in our bonus catalogs, we have a catalog for accessible design. So this is going to have items like wheelchairs, canes, um, hospital beds that you might need for your design. Um, but it also has a number of accessible CAD blocks. So these are ADA CAD blocks giving us some information on, for instance, our turning clearance for a hallway or our wheelchair turn radius. So if I place this in here, we can see what the aisle is that we're needing to be able to do a full 360 turn um, or to be able to turn within our ramp. 
So these are not only going to give us some good information, but we also can use them in our construction documents. Um, so you can place these and then send them to your layout to use for your final documents. So again, today we went through our stair defaults and then we went through placing and editing several different variations of stairs on our exterior plan. And then we went through placing and editing our ramps and some different options that are available there. So that wraps up our presentation for placing stairs and ramps. So now I'm gonna go ahead and open it up for any questions that you guys might have. Okay, so we are going to open it up for questions. So, um, Carrie, while I'm getting myself situated as far as the program, do we have any questions? If you guys do have a question, there's a function to raise your hand within the GoToMeeting control panel. Um, so, Carrie will go ahead and call on you guys in the order that you raise your hand. Hey, Kayla, we have a question from Karen. Hey, Karen, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello, I on the Hi. back stairs that you did um, where you have a landing in between right before you did the ramp. Mm -hmm. how do you, I know you're going to need posts underneath that landing. How do you do that? That's yeah, there's a couple different ways that you can do that. Um, one of the best is just to use the post tool. So if we go around to the back of this house here. And I'm going to tile my views vertically so we can see both. Mm -hmm. So we have some framing options, and one of them is going to be a post or a post with a footing. So if we need mm -hmm. one with a footing, we can drop that in. And so we have a nice big post, and we're going to need to just reduce the size of that. Okay. And then I would just place them on all four corners or wherever we needed to have a post. Yeah. Okay. Does okay. that help answer that question? It does. Now, if they were building a cement block wall under there, is there any, I know sometimes it gets tricky with terrain for me. Sometimes mm -hmm. um, if I turn the terrain off, things will um, move. Or if I want to lower the terrain or change it, they start to move mm -hmm. when they're attached to the terrain. Okay. Yeah, so when you open up an object, um, this is probably not a good example of it. Let's try, will the landing have this? Um, a lot of objects are going to have a reference point. So let's say we're using a polyline solid. I don't know specifically which um, type of object you're referring to here. But if we're talking about something like a polyline solid, we can choose a different elevation reference. Okay. So if the elevation reference is from terrain, then when the terrain moves, the object is going to move. Or if you delete the terrain, that object may move depending upon where it was at. Um, so switching over to something like absolute, um, it can be a really good way to avoid that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Of course. Kayla, our next question comes from Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Go ahead and ask your question. I think I've uh, figured this out based on um, looking at your, you know, presentation with the doing the custom railings. But it mm -hmm. seems like when you use a stair railing, and let, just going to that very, very front railing, you know, there's the little one goes up to the the porch. Um, you know, quite often, you know, you could you could have the railings around the porch, uh, and sometimes you just don't need them. You know, based on code height and all that other stuff. But mm -hmm. you sometimes want a railing at the stair. Um, right. But to make it look more correct, especially if it's a metal railing that's going to be drilled into a concrete stair at the top and the bottom, uh, you know, I want to have a, a newel top and bottom. But there is no way to do a newel. You can't, you can't ask the stair. You can only ask the stair to make a newel, but it only goes to the bottom. So is the answer you just erase your stairs and draw your own railing? That would be one. Um, you also, so if that was the scenario here, um, you could have, similar to what I did back over in the corner, um, so similar to how I changed this to invisible walls, you could do that in the reverse, where you have um, a physical wall just barely on either side of this staircase, 
um, which would at least allow you to have a newel or in this case a um, post to beam or post to ceiling. So that would be one way, or you could manually place a post. Um, there's a number of different ways you can do it. And some of that is going to depend on how you want it to show up in the material list as well. Got it. Yeah, well, really, essentially, like, if there wasn't, I mean, yes, there's probably a post that goes to something. But independent of that completely would be, say, a metal railing that gets mm -hmm. drilled and epoxied into the slab and, and, the, and the, the last tread. So, you know, it would need to extend past where the stair goes. So right. I think the answer is you just have to you just have to turn off your railings and draw a railing if I'm, if I'm Yeah, to get it. Um, that would okay. be probably the easiest way to accomplish it. And right. just place a, a newel independently as its own object um, is a nice easy way to do that. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Let's check in with Eugene Matthews. Hi Eugene, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. How do you show the framing on the landing? I'm sorry, I didn't How catch The framing on the landing. The framing on the landing. Um, that is a good yeah. question because it doesn't typically automatically frame out landings as far as I'm aware. Um, do, Al, do you have experience with that? Do you know how you would typically accomplish that? Uh, if I'm going to do something like that, I'm going manual. Okay. I'm just going to use the, the general framing members and, and set it up. So similar to nice. placing the, the post manually, right? you have additional just framing tools that you can just draw in that manual framing. That, that's how okay. I... Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, we've answered everybody's questions with hands raised. If anybody does have a question, just raise your hand. Um, in the meantime, Laura wrote in and asked if it was possible if you could demonstrate placing stairs on a sloping landscape. Mm, yeah, I haven't done those in a while. Let's take a look. Um, so there's a couple different ways. And my personal favorite is to draw out varying elevation regions that step down. So this would be more like a really shallow slope like we have right here, um, where you can do, let me just get into our terrain, elevation data, and I'm just going to step down the elevation regions. It's trying to turn on this layer. Give us a second here. Um, so I'll basically place an elevation region at the size of each step. So this is going to be more of your kind of modern stepped look, where then I'll have a um, terrain feature over top of each of those, which is just going to be kind of your slab of concrete. There's one. And each region I would make sure is flat in the area. Um, and sort of multiple copy those up the slope so that you, you step them up. Um, so that would be one way to accomplish it. That's going to be more that look where you don't have any handrails. Let's jump in for a second, Kayla. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is my question. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I, first of all, what I was looking to do, I have a very steep slope and okay. I need to, um, uh, what I need to do is um, I, I'm doing some concrete steps where there'll be like say two steps that are shallow like four or five inches thick and then a piece of landing and then it goes down to another couple of steps and then a piece of landing. So how can I achieve that on a steep slope? Let me open up a new plan because I could just make this steeper but I think it'll be easier if we just start with a new one. All right, um, so here I have this terrain and I'm going to go ahead and make a steep slope here. So I'll add in elevation regions, let's say here and here and here. Negative 100, zero to 100, just so we have some something to work with here. All right. So that's an incredibly steep. Steep. It might be actually too steep. Um, yeah, no, that's pretty much what it looks like. <laughs> that's kind of what it looks like because uh, okay. it's going down the water. Um, so to some degree, you're going to be using the manual functions of the stairs. Now, sometimes you get lucky and it just draws it beautifully, but oftentimes you're going to get something more like this. Um, so, and you said that you have a landing kind of in the middle. So wherever that landing is, I would probably put another piece of elevation data because that's usually going to be a, 
a flat point for the terrain to work with. So I'll do another elevation region wherever that um, landing is going to go. And sometimes you can utilize that landing, Let's see if it'll work okay. just draw down from there and we're going to need to go a little bit further so this is really steep um, but then you just open up the staircase and when you're modifying the heights of a staircase automatically we have to uncheck automatic heights and we have to be really um, cognizant of where what we're locking because there are multiple different lock points here so for this staircase i'm going to lock the top and we'll deal with the terrain um, that's encroaching there here in a bit, but at least the top is hitting that landing, which is where we want it to go. So we'll lock the top and then set the bottom to, gosh, what was it? Negative 100, I think was what I had it set to. Whatever that elevation is, and then it's going to make it steep from there. Um, this is a weird example because I made it just a tad too steep where we're not going to be able to fit stairs there. Um, let me open up this elevation. Well, that's what this, each of the stairs, they're they're like very wide, you know, deep. Okay. So in other words, um, there's maybe only like two steps and then it goes to a landing, but the steps are very deep. It's walking down to water. Sometimes what you have to do too, granted this is not, um, the landing is going down into the terrain. So that's part of where we're having a problem here. Let's bring that height up. I don't know what it's what it's set to currently. this works a little better there we go that's doing its job a little bit so then when i open it up and uncheck automatic heights set this to negative 100 we're going to get that steep um, and then for this type we probably wouldn't have an open riser it's not typical so that's going to help to fill in the gaps a little bit and then i may need to do just a little finagling just to move this forward so we're not seeing any grass coming through so essentially, yeah. Yeah, um, say, placing a landing, go ahead. Yeah, so say for example, you've got that landing at the top and then maybe there'd be two steps below that and then another landing. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna do that in between each one. So that's why I recommend placing an elevation region for each place that you have the landing. So if we have another region, a couple steps up from here, say right here and I need to really figure out what the value of this elevation region is so it's set to zero let's say this one is set to 20. each region can be can have a landing sitting on it and the landing should automatically go on top of wherever the terrain is and then we can just draw steps in between them and that adjusted the landing but that's okay See, these two are not meeting up, so that's part of the problem here. Hey, Kayla. Uh huh. Hey, this is Scott. Um, hey, we have a sample that has very, very steep stairs going down to down to down a hillside. Maybe it's similar to what Laura is asking for, and uh, maybe we could just kind of talk through that and and the steps that go through it underneath the uh, user gallery and samples and if you scroll down just and open up the lake point just a little bit further down and open up that pdf plan right in the middle there and if you take a look laura you see the stairs that are kind of going down from the road or the driveway there's a railing on the side there and you know a couple ways that you can typically do that this one's just using the path tool and when you use the path tool it will follow the terrain so if you want to modify the terrain and put landings in and you know sometimes that takes a little bit of time to, to figure out exactly how you want to sculpt the landing once you have your terrain sculpted you could also use the stair tool and just draw a couple stair segments you mentioned you wanted a shallow maybe five inch riser you could just draw like two stair segments and a lot of times when, at least when I do that, I'll just take a section view, overlay the terrain, draw the stair in there, 
and it takes a little bit of effort to manipulate if you're going to use those stairs. And then for the landing, sometimes instead of using the built-in stair landing, you can just use a polyline solid. You could set it to have a, uh, a landing and then draw a railing in as a separate item. Does, does that description help a little bit? It does. I'm wondering, um, since the uh, stairs are really, the, the, the uh, treads are going to be very deep, like, you know, say maybe 24 inches. I, I'm just pulling a number off the top of my head because they're just kind of like, you know, similar to what you see there in the picture, but they're deeper and there's just, mm -hmm. there's just a few of them. Would it be best to even do the stairs that way? They, they are going to be like a stamped concrete. Um, sure. Would it be... Can you do it that way? Just do the steps as, as polyline solids? You, you could. You can also, within that stair tool itself, you could set the depth of Absolutely. your tread to be 24 inches. And you okay. could also set the um, tread amount. Sometimes if you set that, if you're going to use like a flagstone or concrete, you could just set that to four inches itself and use the stair tool. Uh, again, you're going to want to kind of do a combination of, um, you know, an elevation view and your plan view so you see both and where they line up. Okay. And is there, um, it, you're, uh, while I'm thinking of it, is there an option in the library for a stamped concrete? You don't have to go to it, um, but is there an app like for a, uh, like a, you know, they have the decorative stamps. Do you guys have that in the library? I, I don't remember seeing it. That's a I'm asking. I know I've imported some before. Um, I, I do you know how to make a custom material. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. I have done it in the past. I don't know if we have one in the library, but um, when I've used stamped concrete, that's what I've done. Something for Dustin, maybe he can add one. <laughs> <laughs> Finishes. All right, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course. Um, our next question is from Tova. Hi, Tova. Go ahead and ask your question. Hi, um, can you show how to create a lattice skirt that follows the terrain under the stairs? Yes, um, so I have one that I've done under the deck here. And this is using my favorite tool. Um, I think actually for this one I used a um, just plain polyline solid. But the exact same premise would go if you were using um, a terrain feature, which terrain features are then going to follow the terrain. Um, or you could use a terrain wall um, and then paste the lattice material onto it. That's my personal preference for creating lattice. So I drew out, um, this is all one polyline solid, but you could also do individual panels of polyline solids. Um, and then, there's a material in the library for lattice. So in. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, so that's that's my personal preference. There are some other ways to go about it. I just find this to be the easiest and it looks the best. I didn't think of terrain wall. That's great, thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Um, if you have time, Laura had one more question. Happy to show that. What question do you have, Laura? I'm sorry, I just missed what you said about that lattice and I need to do that too. Um, would you mind just repeating that? Cause I wanna make sure that, I know there's a playback. I wanna make sure I got it. No problem at all. Yeah, I did it with, um, personally I did it with a polyline solid and then there's a material in the library just for lattice. There's actually a couple of them. Um, so you can paste the lattice material onto a solid, which is what I've done here. Um, it's actually a full polyline solid around or you can do various panels of them. And then we also were talking about possibly doing the same thing with the terrain feature tool. You could use that one and that one's going to follow the terrain. Okay. I thought you said that, but then that lattice, if you're putting on a polyline solid, th that looks like it's hollow. Um, how do, how do you get rid of that, um, that, uh, concrete material on the back when you're doing a polyline solid? Um, I don't have a concrete material on the back here. Um, so if you look at it, this is a polyline solid and it's just lattice all the way through. The concrete um, that you're seeing is from the foundation. Oh, well, you know, I didn't want the concrete. So what you just sprayed it with that la lattice material, is that is that what you did? Because when you do a polyline solid, it comes out as a, a piece of concrete, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. But I want so it was lattice. concrete initially, and then I painted a material that was lattice. 
Okay, it was painted. Okay, I, I was trying to do a material region, but that wasn't working out so well for me. Okay, so you just spray paint it. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Okay, thanks so much. You're welcome. <laughs> That's all the questions we have today, Kayla. Were there any announcements you wanted to? Yeah, let's take a look. Um, so we have these webinars, as you guys know, going on every Thursday. So next Thursday, we're again going to cover some stairs, but this time we're going to do stair details and cross sections. So um, a little bit more construction document oriented in terms of those stairs. Um, and then we don't have them listed yet, but next month we are going to start going through some roof webinars. So if that's of interest to you, keep an eye on this page, our events page, to sign up for any of those webinars as they're coming up. Um, and then we also have some training events coming up. So if you're interested in kitchen, bath, and interiors, that's going to start next week. We have another class um, or residential introductory and intermediate. We're going to have those class coming up as well. So you can see the full schedule by clicking on this sign up button. Um, and that's about all the announcements that I have. And a reminder, we did record the webinar. So we're going to go ahead and post that up for you. You should receive a link tomorrow. Thank you so much, everyone, and hopefully we will see you back next week for our stair details.